What's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. Today, I am very proud to do this interview uh, because we're doing this with Novin, who got top 16 at PPG Halloween with Soul Striker. Novin has been a longtime patron supporter of mine. We've been testing a lot for these tournaments, and I'm just really, really glad that he's finally seeing results uh, that he wants to see. So, Novin, how are you doing today, man? Doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, you played Soul Striker. Uh, me and you, we've been playing a little bit of Soul Striker. We've been playing a little bit of Red Beerus with the Gogeta chain. So I know that you were kind of torn between those two decks. So what made you want to play this? Uh, the main reason was that I didn't get the cards in time for the Gogeta engine. I ordered some of the Godly Aura guys and uh, I just didn't get them in time. So I just decided to run with this guy instead. Gotcha. Yeah, this guy's a little bit less reliant on some of the new TP cards, but I think it's still really strong. I mean, uh, I know me and my teammates have been playing Soul Striker a lot and we think it's really good. So I think you definitely made a good choice. So we'll go through the main deck here. So we're playing four Baby Unknown Parasite, the one SS3 Gogeta Super Warrior Evolution, and the three SS2 Trunks Heroic Prospect. So um, Gogeta is like the oddball, obviously, but I think most people do play it because it really does help to have an extra three drop unison. Um, were there ever any, any other unisons you were thinking about playing here besides this Gogeta? No, um, as far as blue goes and as far as Soul Striker, like these are pretty much the main guys that you want to play. If you're playing like Zamasu or Blue Vegito, then you can uh, go with the Zeno Unison. But for this deck, I think these are the best Unisons to play it. Um, I actually didn't ever cast the Gogeta. Mm -hmm. um, I mainly have him for the red Gogeta chain, but I didn't play against a single red deck the entire tournament. Yeah, it's definitely really nice to have that extra piece of removal. The minus, the minus one's a little weird because you're never really going to use the the effect to play a mono blue sand, right? But the the removal there is pretty nice. But of course, baby is just like a match made in heaven for Soul Striker. You play it, you awaken, uh, draw, keep drawing cards, which is really good against green. Um, and then I'm I'm actually surprised you didn't play against red, but actually there there wasn't a lot of red at the top cut, so maybe red was a little bit um, underrepresented this time around. But anyways, then we have the three heroic prospects. So obviously this was a best of one tournament, so. I think it's pretty fair to say, like, you know, maining three and then siding one more copy of Royal Prospect is probably pretty good. But did you ever wish that you had all four of the main deck? No, I think the three was a good number. Just like going through the matchups I had, I had two Mirror matches, uh, one Vegex, and I think uh, two Invokers and one Green Gotenks. Um, the, the main time that this guy really sh like shined through was during a Vegex matchup when they get their their uh, I think it's a five drop Vegex and a seven drop Ve Vegex like a six, this guy a comes six and a seven yep yeah yeah six and a seven and this guy comes through really clutch and um, this guy also came through uh, I think in my green go tanks matchup um, just being able to play this guy when they get their green reaper out then they can't attack with them um it helped out a lot but no three was a good number i liked it nice nice yeah it's, it's so funny how actually like last format like blue was so good like blue was everywhere in the meta but this card was really bad because not a lot of decks were cheating out huge battle cards but now you have like red broly dark broly green go tanks red gogeta all those different decks that do spam out like these six drops and higher super early so it is really good to have trunks in in that regard all right so moving along here Infernal Villainy Cell at three. I do want to talk to you about this because I think a lot of people are still on the fence about the pseudo combos. I absolutely love uh, pseudo combos in Soul Striker. I think they're amazing. Uh, I, I want to know your thoughts on it. Yeah, you you convinced me on this one because when you and I had originally talked about the decks, like when we originally created the decks, they were pretty damn similar and really close. Um, and I think uh, I originally had the, the Ultra Instinct Kamehameha, the the, the extra card right um and you had told me that you know what that's that card's kind of over comboing and this card just does the same thing and gets you the the draw and so i decided to play this one instead and um this guy came up really clutch and i think um the it was either my vegex matchup or my against the green go tanks matchup where i didn't really have a good starting hand and then but my first two turns I was able to defend myself and defend my life with the um, with the cell, and it worked out really well. Yeah, no, he feels amazing. Like a lot of times, you don't have a turn one play, but like if your opponent's going first, especially, and they're they have a super aggressive opener, cell feels incredible to use on that on that one energy. And then in combination with Mechiorp, like on turn two, you can negate and then like block another attack with the pseudo combo, so it feels really good. And I want to talk to you about Mechiorp because honestly, it's it's kind of funny actually. Me and you going back to what was it like set nine format? We were talking about a tricolor Jiren deck. And then we, yeah. st we stumbled upon this card 
and we were like, oh, we gotta play this in Tricolor Jiren because it's basically a, a great blue splash. So um, I think it's really funny how this card for us kind of like dates back pretty far, but uh, how, did, how did this card do for you over the weekend? Oh, he was great. I love Mechiorp. He's so good. And yeah, we talked We talked about this guy. We knew he was good two sets ago. Yep, <laughs> and yep. He's even better now. Um, and, and you know what? The, the cell was really, really valuable for me because not once this entire tournament until the last round, round six, did I go first. I went second every single time. So both of these cards were really good because having that early defense when I'm behind in energy on my opponent, especially in the mirror match, like both these guys were really good, but I love Mackie Art, he's awesome. Yeah, really strong. And especially, I, I know something about that where you just never win the dice roll, but uh, you still manage the top, so that's really awesome. So we will continue to go on. And of course, there's a four God ceiling. Uh, I did a deck profile last week and people were like, where is the four God ceiling? It's, it's in there. And uh, you know, we mentioned it, but you, just, you always play it. So there's not much to talk about there. Right. Um, the four dimension magic, you always play it. Baby Hatch, this is a secret we're playing. It's actually, I've actually thought about this a little bit. I mean, I think that Baby Hatch is, is probably the perfect secret rare for just about any blue deck, but realistically, like, we've covered so many defensive cards in this deck that, uh, I don't know, maybe, like, maybe you could play some, like, Smoke Dragon or some sort of offensive secret rare, but I'm probably just uh, thinking too much. How did this card do for you over the weekend? Yeah, when he was first revealed, I kind of hopped on that train a little bit. I was like, he's good, but he doesn't win you the game kind of thing. Right. But, like, after playing the tournament, I was like, no, he definitely saved me like a turn or two and helped me win the game um against my vegex matchup i played this guy and um he had two of the seven drops on board and this was in round two and i played this guy and um this guy and another card that we'll probably get to later like helped me seal the win against the vegex matchup yeah um, i think i was overthinking it just a little bit sorry go, go on yeah the round six was the green go tanks after i got the trunks off and passed the uh, opponent passed turn back to me and i couldn't really do anything the next turn passed back to him i played hatchiak really early against the green go tanks matchup i think like turn turn like his turn four and like and i just played this guy and he wasn't able to do anything and from there uh i think my turn four i was just able to control the game get out an, a golden ape and just uh really take him. so this guy came in really clutch uh, i can see people playing black smoke but this guy's really good yeah i can see that for sure and it's actually really nice actually when you can set up your three drop unison plus to it then it's at five and then if you can just basically end their turn with baby hatch uh especially against something like go tanks where they just want to put a lot of pressure on but you stop them from doing that yeah, then your unison's already have five markers. Your opponent cannot remove any markers. And then you just like go in with the baby, uh, with, with the golden grade baby. That seems really good. And then four sensor beans. So this is actually a card I was debating on cutting to two in my list, believe it or not. And then like siding the other two. Currently I have it at three and I side one more. So how was four for you in the main deck? Because I just thought it was a little bit underperforming in this meta. Yeah, you know what? I could probably cut him down to three. Um, I think like the most times that I needed it or to defend myself or to pump somebody else up or to untap an energy like it, it's good but um I I can I can see cutting him down to three uh, four four wasn't a bad number interesting I will try it out so we will go on so you played four Obuni four Mirichum and two uh sorry two Mirichum and two Janemba so I think I think you've seen my list I don't play Obuni at all um, I don't think it's very great in this meta, but I do want to hear your thoughts on how it performed because obviously you played four copies. So how did Obuni do for you this weekend? Um, against the mirror match, it was a little tough because you can still do the god ceiling on the tokens. Right. And so I, I did that to a few of my opponents. And then once they started seeing uh, me do that, then they started doing it. So um, I, I could see probably cutting him down to, to three, but no, definitely... I. I can't agree with cutting him out completely. He did his job in being able to get me extra plays, um, getting in an extra 20k attack, even if I didn't have the tokens on board. Mm -hmm. um, the, he, he was awesome. And the Janemba, I, if I were to cut down Obuni, like I would put in more of the Janemba. The Janemba is really damn good in this deck, like so good. It is amazing when you play this guy turn four and they have no response and you, pass to your opponent um with four energy open right and then you draw a card and he's a 20k critical he's awesome yeah janemba put in a lot of work for me too i think jim is really good i think mary chim's really good especially against green where they can't like freeze a charismatic villain but i will say i know you played against uh, i think it was it was two invoker this weekend right 
Right. Right. So I know you play against two Invoker, and um, Obuni is particularly good against Invoker because it is a deflect battle card. They really don't have a way to kill all the tokens in one shot. So I will right. say that is definitely a good tech for that matchup in particular. But overall, I mean, these are all amazing four drops for blue right now, in my opinion. And it was it was pretty cool to see a lot of lists where tinkering with these numbers like some played two yeah. obuni some played zero obuni some played four obuni and it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see that yeah the mary cham actually won me my matchup against the round two against the vegix player because he had no response to mirror cham and they're always revealing a battle card right off the top so just having that 25k dual attack double striker on board it really put the pressure on the vegix player yeah super strong and then we have Three, baby. This is pretty standard. I mean, it's one of our new game enders for blue. And this card is so amazing for blue. It's really cool that it's been printed. Uh, two Ultimate Fusion Gogeta and two Hit Deadly Vanguard. So the first thing I want to ask you about is Hit. I actually was siding this card, but I actually kind of discovered it wasn't super great in Soul Striker, mostly because mm. um, you can't actually use it on turn three most of the time because you want to play your Unison. And then when you attack, you only get two energy back. So like in, right. S in SS3 Reboot, for instance, you get three energy back every time. So this card's really good. But how did you feel about Hit in the main deck? Hit actually won me one of my games against the Invoker players because they were sitting at six energy and I was at, I think, five because um, they went first. Um, and I had three energy open for the Hit. He tapped three energy to play the Rival Seeker. Yep. Um, I tapped the three for the Hit, put the Rival Seeker back to his hand, and then he attempted to play the Rival Seeker again and I had a God Ceiling Trunks in my hand, and he had already used his ability to snipe out, I think, uh, previous God Ceiling uh, Trunks, and I drew another one, and then so I did hit, he played the Rival Seeker again, and I did God Ceiling, and that's what won me the game. So the, the hit came in so clutch against Invoker specific. Other matchups, um, I didn't really play him too much. Usually just came as a charge, but I, I think against Invoker, it's, it's particularly good. Gotcha. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep it in my side deck then. So two Gogetas. Um, this is one that I've had to convince my teammates about. I think it's really good. How did you feel about Gogeta? Um, he came in pretty good in the mirror match. Um, I, I think my round three was the one that ended up in a tie. And that was against <laughs> Jonathan Peterson, who actually got second place in the tournament. Had we not gone to ta time, this guy, along with the Golden Ape, they were both coming onto the field and... Uh, I probably would have won that game if uh, we didn't get called the time. But our, our game was super close and it was really good. Overall, in theory, this card's really good against green go tanks, but I only played against one and I didn't get to cast this guy. So I think he's still really good, but I do also think he can be a cannon. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to definitely mess around with it a little bit more. And then the final stuff in the deck, this is all pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Zamasu comboing with Goku hit. And then we have the three Sand and Sings. And the one Chompa actually is a little bit different. Um, I don't play it because I think like with in, in tandem with your unison, giving your leader double strike, I think that's like good enough. But did Chompa steal you some games? No, um, that's definitely one person I would cut out. He was totally useless the entire tournament. And uh, I kind of wish I didn't run. Oh, that's all right. I mean, you still did really great with the deck. And uh, yeah, and I agree with that because a lot of your stuff has double strike, even have triple right. strike in the deck. So um, that's pretty good. But overall, I mean, again, great job. Um, any final things about the deck you want to say? Anything about the event or any shout outs you want to get out there? Uh, the event was super smooth. Uh, PPG did a really good job. Um, uh, about the deck, I wish I had three cards in the deck. I wish I had the Secret Identity Mass Saiyan because against the Mirror Match, it's really good. Uh, I wish I had the max power Kamehameha because mm -hmm. I think that card's really good. And I also wish that I had one of the uh, drop negates, the all too easy, because yep. uh, I got victory strike. That was my only loss. It was against the Invoker deck. And um, shout out to uh, all my boys that I play with at Game Chess in Southern California. Um, and also, I do want to shout out to Neil Patrick, because uh, actually in round one, um, I was playing against a mirror match, and Neil and I, our game was really close, and he actually beat me, but he had to drop off, and he said, I can't play in the rest of the tournament. Can you take the win? And then just like, just do work. He's like, okay, I'll take it. And I did, and ended up topping with it. So I talked to him about it afterwards, and we were both like super stoked on it and stuff, but I guess he had some Halloween stuff to get in, uh, partake in the rest of the so shout out to him shout out to the uh, game chess guys and then shout out to yourself as well too joey thank you for all your help uh, for anyone who wants to do a patreon with joey highly recommend thank you very much man once again great job and we will see you the next time that you top
All right. Thanks, man.